Hello, welcome to another Cleave Tech Tech Tip. And in this Tech Tip, we're going to put this bushing into the can. It may seem rather simple, we just push it in, solder it in, but it's not quite so simple. And I show you some little techniques to make sure that it's aligned nicely and the motor can run nice and freely. So now the magnets are glued in, it's time to install a new bushing into the end of the can. I don't think their rules at the Slot Stocks Club they're in allow ball races to be put in the end of the can, so I'm going to put another bushing in place for now. Um, this one has been ever so slightly used, I think it came out of a new, pretty new motor um, that I fitted a ball race to at one stage, so it's actually okay. It has a little bit been trimmed at the bottom, but I think that was possibly to uh, fit it into an M bell or, or something at some point but I've checked it on a shaft and it's a nice uh, good bushing still. You can also see that I've cleaned off the end of the can a little bit, I've flattened it off, I've just rubbed it down on a little bit of wet and dry paper just to clean off any rough edges on the end of this can here and I've also just cleaned around the inside of the hole where it was going as well with a little tiny little diamond bit. It looks something like this and I just ran that round the inside of the hole with my Dremel just to clean off the inside of the hole and then I used my blue tack to clean up uh, all around it again to clean the little bit of fragments of metal obviously the metal dust that will stick to the magnets. Now this is what I'm going to use to install the bushing accurately in the can. Ideally you could probably get a uh, metal slug to go into the can properly that's perfectly round that sits between the magnets but say without any specialist tools or without you manufacturing things to match, this is probably the best way to do it. That's to take the armature, wrap some tape around the armature, and the tape obviously builds the armature out and makes it a larger diameter. So what I've actually done is I've put enough tape around there so that the armature is a nice tight fit between the magnets. So that slides in there nice and tightly. And when the armature is sitting tightly between the magnets, it means it's spaced properly uh, in regards to the magnets and it allow us to align this bushing nicely at the end. So I've just loosely pushed the motor together. So the end bell's pushed in place where it's going to be. I might just attach it with a couple of screws, but in this case, it's, it fits there quite nice. It doesn't wobble, it doesn't move. So I probably don't need to put any screws in there. But if the end bell was wobbly or moved, I'd probably screw it in place at this point. I know that the armature is going to sit fairly well towards the can end. So in this case, I'm actually going to install the bushing from the outside in and push it onto the shaft in that way rather than the inside out. Obviously the flanged part of the bearing is a thin part. So if your armature was coming even closer to the end here, then I might turn the bushing the other way and have the bushing sticking out this end. But I know that the pinion needs to go quite a long way onto this shaft. So it's probably better for me to install the bushing this way round. So most of the bushing is inside the can and less of it sticking out. So I can get the pinion a bit further onto the shaft and get uh, and ignore this really rough, horrible part on the shaft so that the pinion sits uh, much truer on the shaft itself. So that's part of the reason why I've cleaned up the outside of the can as well. So I've pushed that on. Now, in order to help the bushing line up, I've got this little tool here. It's actually a gear drilling tool but it fits nicely onto a two mil shaft. So I'm going to push that onto the shaft like that. I'm going to tighten it up and then the bushing will go against that nice square edge and be nicely lined up with the shaft when I solder it in. So my soldering iron's nice and hot, around about 410 degrees. I've got my little flux pot here. This is Lucky Bob's flux. I quite like this flux, works nicely. Got my little tiny flux brush here. So I dab a little bit of flux in there and I'm going to run it around the inside there of the can where the bushing is going to solder in. Again, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want too much flux in there. Again, just going to flux around the outside there, trying not to get it onto the shaft itself like that. 
So after applying a little bit of flux, perhaps something I should have done first was apply a little bit of oil to the motor shaft. So I'm going to do that now as well, just to make sure the motor shaft doesn't get soldered in place. So there we go, a little bit of flux on, a little bit of oil, sorry, on the motor shaft and just rotate that a little bit like that, just to make sure the oil runs inside the bushing, just to make sure I'm not gonna solder the bushing to the motor shaft. And then I can take my soldering iron and my solder and I can just tack it in place. Here goes. Flow nicely around. If you need to put a little bit more flux on, that's fair enough and heat it up again. You shouldn't need a lot of solder to actually hold it in place. You want the solder to flow nicely around the bearing or the bushing, holding it all in place, but obviously not too much solder that it leaves blobs everywhere. There we go. That should have flowed nicely around there. I'll take the end off and we'll have a closer look. So I've just removed that armature and the end bell. So you can just see, I've just given it a wipe around with a, a cloth. There we are, so you can see that it's nice. The solder joint runs nicely around the whole of the bushing and holds it in place nicely. So I'm just gonna give that a little wash under the tap to make sure all the acid flux is gone. I'm also gonna give the armature a bit of a wipe around, uh, take the tape off and just give the armature a little quick wash around the end just to make sure there's no acid flux cut onto the armature. And then we're ready for further assembly. This little device that I used on the end, as I say, it's not really meant for that purpose, but it was quite handy. It's got a nice accurate two mil hole and a nice flat face. It's my little gear drilling jig. If you haven't seen my gear drilling video to lighten it up and make your car faster, I'll put a link on the screen up here. But basically, drilling some holes in your gears, all uniformly done, helps your gears stay nice and balanced and helps your car run much faster uh, without vibrating so much. So now that I've glued the magnets in the can, I've put a new bushing in the can as well. It's time to rebuild the end bell, but you'll have to wait till next time to rebuild the end bell. It's quite a bit of work that's gonna go into that to improve things and make it all line up nicely. So that's in the next tech tip. So thank you very much for watching this one again, and please have a look at my other videos. Please subscribe. Please hit the thumbs up button, the like button underneath. Um, turn on your notifications, hitting the little bell icon as well. All of those things help get my videos out to more slot racing people and hopefully I can give a little bit more back and give them some tech tips of how to improve their slot cars. Thanks again for watching. See you again soon.